What is up guys, this is Winter Stector here. How much do you think you need to pay for a flagship phone? $900? $800? What if I tell you you can have the similar phone for only $375.99? Then you will be interested in today's review unit, the ASUS Zenfone 2. The first Zenfone series was a huge success for ASUS. It certainly gave the company a pat on the back for re-entering smartphone market since the failure of the Garmin ASUS lineup and of course the not so hard platform series. The Zenfone 2 certainly does not let the predecessor down. It has attracted huge attention and sales since the release. The Zenfone 2 comes in two different models, 32GB of internal memory with 2GB of RAM, 64GB of internal memory with 4GB of RAM. The unit I have is a 4GB of RAM model. Compared with the first Zenfone, the Zenfone 2 has one screen size to choose from, 5.5 inch. The reason claimed by Asus is that majority of the first generation Zenfone sales are actually 5 inch and 6 inch model. Many users feel that 5 is too small but 6 is too big. They want something in the middle. Third, the birds of 5.5 inch model, which I feel is a great compromise because it offers a screen that's big enough enough and manageable for daily use. The Zenfone 2 take on a curved shaped body design, which is much more comfortable and easy to grip compared to the first Zenfone. Since the curved shaped body make the edge too thin to point the buttons, the power buttons located at the top of the phone and the volume rocker at the back. It will sound really funny, but on my very first glance on the Zenfone 2's back, I thought I was looking at a possible render of LG G4. One design feature I really like is the brush stroke on the back. It really brings out the quality of the phone and gives the illusion of metal body, but Zenfone 2's back is actually nothing but pure plastic. But that still won't stop me to appreciate the solid craftsmanship and the build quality of Zenfone 2. The design feature that puzzled me is that the speaker grill is spanned across the entire back, but the fact is the speaker only occupies one side of the phone. The only thing I really dislike about the overall design of the phone is that the back cover is really difficult to open. The appearance alone is not enough size by people anymore, and the Zenfone 2 does pack quite an upgrade since the first Zenfone. The first major upgrade is the screen. The Zenfone 2 is rocking the 4HD screen compared to a 720p screen on the first generation. The screen is very good, and the Asus Splendid mode allows you to adjust the color temperature to your own liking or using the preset mode to give Give you the best visual experience. However, I do personally find the native color temperature of the screen is on the warmer side, which happened to be my own personal taste. Powering the device is Intel Atom Z3580 Quad CPU with Power VRG6430 GPU. The performance of the CPU is comparable to Snapdragon 801, which is powering most flagship phones from last year. The performance may not as good as Snapdragon 810, but still offer a decent performance for the price tag. I do notice that this Intel CPU does not hear as much as Qualcomm CPU. I experienced no lags or any slowdown during my uses. The CPU did not even struggle to process anything I threw at it. There is a lot of complaint toward the capability issue with Intel CPU because of the x86 structure, since most of apps are developed based on ARM structure, but so far the app I'm using works perfectly. The capability issue can be fixed with update from app developer. To see all of these three packages, a whopping 4 gig of DDR3 RAM. So if you are those people who more test very heavily, then this will prevent the phone from lagging. The Zenfone 2 comes with 5.0 lollipop with ASUS own Zen UI on top. A lot of folks may not pay too much attention to the Zen UI, but keep in mind that early ASUS Android device only come with stock Android. Being the newest kit to the customized UI, ASUS demonstrated their capability to make sure it's comparable to other existing UI out there. My first impression of Zen UI is very positive. It is very well designed. All the settings and layout are where I expected them to be from other UI I use. Of course, other than what the competitor has to offer, ASUS does pack a Zen UI with other features you don't really see on other devices. First, we got the main feature ASUS try to promote. What's next and do it later. Let's start with what's next. This app gathers all the notifications matter to the user most in one place, such as events on calendar, email, text message, weather, and missed call. You can easily manage your schedule for today or the next few days. The app by default will display calendar events. If you want to display emails, text messages, and missed call, you need to group those contacts into a VIP list. Alright, let me tell you what's happening next. The Do It Later app allows you to remind yourself the stuff you need to do later. The app does some of those typical text reminder apps, but it is more advanced than that. Other than writing the stuff you need to do, you can mark the apps you need to go back later on as well. For example, an article you want to finish reading on a website, a YouTube video you want to spend more time on it, an email you need to finish writing, etc. Then, when you go back to the Do It Later app, you can tap on the task and directly resume back where you were. For example, by tapping on a YouTube video I marked earlier, I can jump right into YouTube and watch the video from where I left off. ASUS, being a major player in the computer industry, does want the phone to synchronize with computers. 
first, the birth of these two apps, PC Link and Remote Link. After you install a program PC Link on your computer, a miniature of phone will show on the screen after you connect your device to the computer via USB or Wi-Fi. You will have full access to the apps on the phone. For example, you can receive a reply text message right onto your computer. The Remote Link is by far my favorite app. After you pair up Zenfone 2 via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi to your computer, Zenfone 2 kind of become a Harmony remote. You can use it as a wireless mouse to launch and navigate your PowerPoint slide and use it to remote control Windows Media Player. You can have access to your entire playlist and play, pause, adjust volume right on the device. To make sure you can access some apps quickly, last Zen UI introduced a shortcut right on the lock screen to make sure you can launch it faster. The newer Zen UI bring in the so-called Zen Motion. You can have access to certain apps such as camera, web browser, phone dialing screen, text message, etc. by swiping the corresponding letter on the blackout standby screen. For example, swipe C for camera, V for phone, S for text message, W for web browser. You can always go into the setting menu and change the apps you want Zen Motion to launch. This day, it is normal for us to tell other people to borrow our device. The Snap View and Kids Mode allows us to protect our privacy. The Snap View allows users to switch between various accounts and will display different content accordingly. For example, picture taken by user A were not available to user B. Same idea for apps downloaded. The Kids Mode allows you to determine the apps your kids can have access to such as games, so your kids can always have something new to keep them busy. Core quality Zenfone 2 is also very good. Asus did not compromise this at all. I can pick up 4 4G reception everywhere I go, and the only place I cannot pick up anything, changes so other phone were not able to do as well. However, I do notice the phone is not very willing to switch to 3G and will rather stay on weak 4G signal. Maybe it has something to do with Asus in search a credible model, where they will always keep going with the newest technology. Zenfone is also one of those device offer to think capability. If you are those people running around with personal or work phone, then Zenfone 2 is the phone you should consider. But unfortunately, the second SIM only offer 2G, not 4G. Therefore, you cannot use data service with SIM 2. The camera on the Zenfone 2 is also something not to overlook. Asus did not bump up the megapixel count on the camera by focusing on optimizing. I did not own the first Zenfone, but the picture is very good. In place with good lighting, the color are spot on and saturated. Pretty much, I can get an ideal picture whenever I take a shot. Even in rainy or cloudy day, I still can get pretty good pictures. Low light shots are also pretty good. The picture are a bit fuzzy, but still within the reasonable bound. One particular mode, Asus been talking about is the low light mode. The idea is that the camera was shot with 3 big pixels rather than 13 small pixels. Therefore, the 3 pixels can maximize the available lights to lit the subject. Very similar idea by HTC's Ultra Pixel camera. Under pitch black, the camera is able to capture a subject, but it is very fuzzy. But if there's a light source, the low light mode performs perfectly. I say this mode very useful for taking pictures like nightclubs, restaurants, and even birthday parties. The front has a 5 megapixel camera, which is pretty standard in year 2015. The lens does have a 85 degree angle and of course a paramara mode to satisfy all your selfie needs. The battery life on the Zenfone 2 is quite satisfying. I can go with happy gaming while browsing and watching videos with one single charge. But if you are running low on battery, the fast charging can get you enough charge in 10 minutes for 4 hours of talk time. 60% of battery within 30 minutes, I can get the phone to full charge within an hour. I am very happy with the performance of Zenfone 2. Of course, you can always point and say that Intel Atom Z350 is not even close to the performance of Snapdragon 810 and the phone is still running DDR3 memory. But if you look at the price tag again and think about the performance it has, Zenfone 2 sure packs a punch for a very good price. If you are looking for a smartphone that offers value for money, then this is the phone you should consider. What do you think of the Zenfone 2? Do you think this type of low value phone can disrupt the market for expensive flagship phones? Leave your comments down below and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. If you really like my video, please hit the like and subscribe button.